Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 10, Romans chapter 8 verse 16, and Acts chapter 2 verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord God for your word. Thank you for giving us strength for a new day. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to strengthen the work of our hands. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 10. Now when I went into the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delilah, son of Methabal, who was confined to his home, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple for they are coming to kill you. They are coming to kill you by night. All right. And so we know that this was um, Nehemiah. And he's visiting um, this. He, he's like a prophet is from what we understand. Um, his name is Shemaiah. Um, and so he was speaking to Nehemiah and he basically prophesied that they were going to come and kill him that night and so that he should run to the temple and hide with him and so um he had already been receiving you know lots of um intimidating words from Sambalot, Tobiah and Gresham and so um, they wanted him to stop the work that he was doing, come down off the wall and come talk to them. So they had sent multiple messengers to try to get him to stop. And um, he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't come down. Right. And so um, he he ends up coming down here and he is with uh, Shemaiah. He, he didn't come down to them. This is um, a guy, another man. Um, that he that is supposed to be on his side, right? And he is prophesying to him that um, these men are going to try to come kill him by night. But Holy Spirit revealed to him, um, God revealed to him that Sambalot and Tobiah had paid this prophet um, to speak against him, to prophesy against him and say these words. And so he realized that, you know, no, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not going to go and hide in the temple. I loved his response. He was basically like, who am I to go hide in the Lord's temple? Basically, I'm not going to go and do that. And so um, he wanted to continue the work, right? And so he did, and he was protected by God. God protected him the entire time. They didn't... Um, they didn't kill him. He, he, they never came that night to kill him. And they, you know, he, he had guards and things like that, but he kept up with the work, you know, even when they had to carry swords and things, they kept going with the work, right? The intimidation factor was there, but they kept working. And that's the thing, you know, usually when the enemy gets busy in an area, you know you're in the right area, right? When the enemy is always getting frustrating, you know you're doing the will of God, you know that that's the spot, right? You've hit the spot, especially when he just keeps coming from all directions at you when you're doing what God told you to do. Oh, you you hit the nail on the head. You're doing the will of the Father, right? And that's where we need to be. That's where we need to stay. And so... Um, yeah, it's like every now and again, you, you do something and you know, oh my goodness, like, you know, it's coming from all sides, you know, don't be discouraged in that when you're being intimidated, um, intimidating spirits, um, coming at you, um, words, um, that are saying that you cannot or should not do this or, or you're doing this wrong, trying to condemn you for something that you know that the father told you to do, right? You, you have to stand firm in faith. Right. You have to stand firm in faith. You have to stand on the last word that God told you. 
right? And and he is never going to lead you astray. That's why we have Holy Spirit. That's why we have Holy Spirit's guidance. Now, a prophet is supposed to be used of God, right? But when this man was speaking, that was not a word from God, right? And so um, he he was he was being used by the enemy to intimidate. And so, you know, that's between God and that man. God is going to handle that. But the, the thing is, you have to use Holy Spirit um, in order to differentiate, in order to discern, in order to um, have knowledge of what the right thing is, right? Um, just because it's not, um, um, uh, maybe it has something in the law or 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 it's not written in the law. It doesn't mean Holy Spirit is not leading you into a certain area. You always have to listen for what Holy Spirit is telling you to do, right? You specifically and then test the spirit, make sure that it's Holy Spirit speaking. And then, you know, God is going to guide you in that thing, right? He's not going to leave you. He's going to he's going to show up for you. Amen. All right, let's look at the next verse. Um, Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Wow, all right. And so um, we don't have to be afraid or in fear um, of whether or not we're on God's side right? We are on the Lord's side. We need to stand firm in faith. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness inside of our spirit that we are children of God, right? We're going to have that assurance, that firmness in Him, letting us know, yes, you're a child. Yes. And you know, sometimes you need that reassurance over and over again, you know, where you might be feeling like, I feel like I'm just doing the most, right? And you need, you need um, that assurance from Holy Spirit. He knows exactly when you need it. He'll give you that blessed assurance. And if you don't feel like you can feel that, you need to go in your prayer closet more. You need to go sit and, and talk to God, you know, pray, um, bring your word in there, pray a little bit, and then learn how to be quiet. You have to learn how to be quiet and still um, and and wait on him. Sometimes it takes a long time, especially when you first start um, really spending more time in your prayer closet. It it takes a while in the beginning to rev up that weight, right? And then once you get into it, you realize he speaks in the weight. He's there in the waiting and he'll begin to splash things in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit. And you'll realize, oh my goodness, the Lord does speak, right? He speaks to me. And so, yeah, that is, it, it will bear witness inside of you that you're a child of God. You'll realize I truly am a child of God. I am his own creation and he is my father and he's watching out for me. He's going to bear witness in your spirit with his spirit, right? And he's going to connect inside of you. And you're going to know that you're a child of God. No matter what intimidation comes against you, it doesn't mean that it, the weapon won't form. It means that it won't prosper, right? God is with you. He is holding your hand right along as you face it. He wants your character to grow. He wants you to be mature. He wants you to know when you see that sword coming against you, you don't need to be afraid. He's standing right there with you and everything has to be subject to him, right? So even if someone's attacking you, someone is belittling you or in the enemy is trying to intimidate you, stand firm in faith with God. Hold his hand. Know that he's got your back, right? All right. And so the third verse that the Lord gave me was Acts chapter 2, verse 3. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. 
All right. And so this is just speaking of the Holy Spirit resting on the people at Pentecost, right? So this would be initial receiving of the Spirit. So when you receive um, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to make sure that you have received Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is to come into you and seal you, seal you um, with promise right um he is going to be that seal on you that says hey you're not coming out of my hands right and so um when we are sealed with the holy spirit um we have the evidence of speaking in tongues right we can lay hands on the sick and they can be well we can cast out spirits there is so much power in the holy spirit and that's why you have need of the holy spirit if you don't have holy spirit you need to go um to um your elders in your church and and, and pray and tarry for the holy spirit wait on holy spirit to come um you need to it maybe you need to sit down with someone and be coached through speaking in tongues these things are critical they are crucial to being empowered as a believer you don't want to walk around as a wimpy noodle christian you want to be strong and stand firm in your faith and so the way that you do that is by receiving the power of the holy spirit you can go to an elder you can um, sit and be walked through the steps of speaking in tongues if your church does not believe in speaking in tongues you need to pray about whether or not that's your church you need to ask god to reveal that to you because um speaking in tongues is critical right and it is very necessary and so the way you speak in tongues is you yield your tongue to the lord this is what they teach in my church and it's such a, a beautiful way that they um help people as they are learning how to relax and um uh, be ushered into the presence of God and allow Holy Spirit to rest on them and the one thing I know that he always says is you must yield your tongue right God is not gonna choke you and say speak you know and start making you speak you must yield your tongue you must speak and as you speak, Holy Spirit is going to take over and help you as you begin to speak in tongues. And so here it says, and divided tongues as fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them them and so holy spirit is going to come and rest on you and that is just a part of the process of of growing in christ when you receive christ right you receive holy spirit and so it says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god God knows that we are his children and the spirit is going to bear witness to that. So receive the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. You want to have staying power. You don't want to just, uh, you know, be in it for a temporary, you know, you want staying power in Christ. You want to abide in Christ and therefore you need his spirit. Amen. Don't let the spirit of intimidation, the spirit of fear and all these other things the enemy tries to come with to stop the work from being done. Um, don't let it fool you. Amen. Do the will of the father and the spirit is with you. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for all you've done. Thank you for this great word. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. In Jesus' name, help us, God, to walk by your spirit. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.